okay remember the entire learning program the material is downloadable so you can go back to that portal and download the way i instructed you uh onto downloading the entire material this course is aligned to a uni standard called facilitator uni standard okay it's aligned to an id double one seven eight seven one train the trainer we normally call it as a fancy train the trainer but it's facilitation we train you to become a facilitator okay and then after becoming a facilitator then you must register as a registered facilitator with the relevant body let's say you have trained and you are doing computer then you need to register with the mict sita right uh, let's say you have trained to be, uh, I mean, you, you are training and you have got also expertise into uh, tourism, whatever you're doing, hospitality, then you need to go to the relevant CETA like Keth CETA to register as a facilitator or you need to go to the QCTO, the Quality Council for Trades and Occupation and register as a facilitator. All right. Are we together? Yeah. Okay, let's proceed. Like I said, the uni standard is aligned to NQF level five. Double one seven eight seven uh, one. This is a uni standard aligned to facilitation for those individuals who wish to get involved into education and training, mainly facilitation industry, and it also serves as a support uh, main. Course. There are only three the programs, program. but we escalate them to four, but to give you a full understanding. If you have done assessor, then you wouldn't be going through understanding of the national qualification framework or the NQF system. But because you have not done assessor, then we have to take you through the NQF so that you can be able to understand that NQF uh, is the guiding and the, 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 the overseer of all qualifications that are facilitated within the, the education and training environment in South Africa. Okay, so there are three main modules or three main outcomes. That is facilitation. Preparation, facilitation, learning, and then facilitation evaluation. So one could say plan and prepare for facilitation, facilitate learning, and then evaluate learning. So these are the three main outcomes. However, we add on two more details on understanding the principles of the NQF to guide you through on understanding literally what is it that you're going to be facilitating. Because in most cases, a lot of people just fast fast conduct facilitation and then they actually fail to understand the principles of facilitation are linked to the principles of NQF. Okay? So you end, you end up uh, just conducting facilitation but not analyzing that whatever you're facilitating, it actually needs to be benchmarked and aligned to the NQF so that the outcomes can be achieved properly. Otherwise, you end up going to a class and sitting or standing in front of a group or uh, candidates or individuals or a class or a hall and then you're talking to individuals but nobody will ever understand you. Why? Because you didn't take in the element or the principles of uh, NQF. So you are pitching your facilitation to a wrong group, to a wrong target. You get what I'm saying? Why? The NQF gives you the level. Of facilitation that even when you are aligning whatever you're going to talk about your topics are aligned based on to the NQF level the level gives an understanding at what standard must you pitch your facilitation lesson plan how are you going to address specific components based on the level of individuals that you are going to talk to it must be pitched at the standards where individuals are best comfortable that's why we have what's called nqf levels level one up to level 10 
you might be given a group of individuals that are going to be facilitated too, but only to find that the levels differ from one to another. Maybe the entry requirement onto the course was not met successfully. Most especially it happens to companies that are facilitating learnership programs. You find that you're just given a bunch of individuals to train on a course and then they must exit. But those are coming from different backgrounds. The vetting process was not done correctly. So you're sitting with individuals, some have done metric, some do not have metric, they are grade 10, some are grade 11s. The level at which everybody is going to be facilitated to is different. The understanding capabilities is different. So it will be very difficult for you to articulate those individuals and exit them towards assessment. Because your role as a facilitator is to encourage learning so that learners can be assessed. You get what I'm saying? You work yes. hand in hand with the assessor. Unless you are the assessor, it means you're also going to help yourself if you facilitate correctly based on the levels. That the assessment becomes appropriate to the standards of the learners that have been, have been placed onto the course. That's why we all... Perfect. So, the that we give is NQF level 3. So, I normally tell them that those are the basics. You can expect uh, the level 4, NQ or 5, who are also here doing the, the level 2 or 3. Perfect. You see now, that's what happens. Normally, without getting an understanding as a facilitator, it means you cannot give advice. To the institution where you are conducting facilitation you get what i'm saying they'll just give you a group of individuals all right okay Thank what you. are the once objectives course, yeah. once you've completed the reason why program, we emphasize as a facilitator to learn about the NQF. because remember you is, must be a subject you matter expert must to take be up this course to you are going to train people the against the knowledge that you must be learners known, not against the knowledge that you don't know you're going to read about it the level you gives what you I'm saying. what you must be a subject matter expert to, what to be a facilitator. Now you facilitate something that you know or must you know something that you don't know that you're gonna learn. That's a mistake that happens so without in training, understanding uh, the NQF. Facilitators you won't come be able to class to know and they just given a course that they have no achievement. They are not required. qualified. Every to do those qualification, qualification they don't have got what is called expertise. So they have to go and read like any other student and start to master and start to come I mean then they come back and teach it that is wrong facilitator you must be a subject meta expert that's why we say once program. you do this criteria program, for you to then you are eligible to register as a subject meta expert that the is the entry level you register as exit a level to and facilitator are the, are the outcomes that must be achieved for you to be a constituent facilitator with the quality council for trades and occupation learning. you must be a subject matter expert in other Those words if outcomes, you are in uh, ultimately you, you are teaching and you are computing must be assessed your, your, that's your because, because they course come that you are with teaching. what you call the it means criteria. you must be qualified in that course as an end user computer i'll give you examples I mean, uh, as computing as into the as course and then a, you see a, a qualified individual you must have and passed how the a qualification and is graduated and have a certificate uh, okay. you know, through through the entire process then with also, that skill got for you to be you a good facilitator going, you, you must be able uh, to facilitate to transfer the skill that you have progression with other individuals training, through facilitation career path as a facilitator it means when you take up students you must be able to know what are they going to become when they finish <laughs> you understand what is what is the objective what is this that they're going to become because if you don't know the objective of the course you cannot facilitate it to the best abilities otherwise you need to know what when i finish this course yes. with these kids with this that's what i'm with saying this student, with this whoever is if doing you have the course, a course what are they going to become let's say you what are the outcomes that and let's gives say you done hospitality to give them you know, a career course. guidance so there are so many path. different courses in hospitality so during your facilitation you know? yeah, if so you are many. teaching so people in hospitality that like i said hospitality, hospitality is broad let's Listen. say hotel management let's say whatever if you're going to teach people right? in hospitality, hospitality is broad and 
done field. as national course are you going to channel them i don't know whatever you've in done in hospitality but are they Let's going to be done in one hotel one management courses in are they going to be in event management it means are they going to be in housekeeping are they going to be in catering are they you've going to be in out of what it. are they going to be so it means doing when they complete uh, so when you want to path, register can only be as a facilitator if a facilitator understands the quality the council NPF is going to levels. ask you those qualifications and those skills that you've got so whatever you're going to facilitate then it will you ask need you to know the you outcome a facilitator you because need the to be having will this qualification this one that we are doing now the career path. Uh, which is a facilitator training then when you, you guide students because your role is to channel students to towards a career in the path. professional development program we call the, the career PDC. path I don't know whether will you know lead it. them to assessments to that to determine the indeed graduates they are qualified of education and they have got the knowledge right. imparted onto them during yeah, the learning what process the whatever you train so educators them, they have to do if you are not going to the main stream of education examined. you must do the PDC, examination is what right? we call assessment the postgraduate certificate two categories of either education assessment that is don't have a background in education, education between you and never train as a teacher activities so it means they work teach you to become a teacher homework assignments Whatever they learn during, during the NPF process, we don't call you and teaching them. anymore. And then it's they have to sit. That's why we uh, to, to do this to complete course the of facilitator to become a facilitator, facilitator process. to facilitate NPF means learning also programs. Your role because you are a master of them, but you cannot just go to class to teach exist. them without knowing the norms on how you can right. handle so and manage path learning can only be in the NPF by the knowledge of. Uh, the course NPS this unit standard we allows you it guides you it teaches you on how can you manage learning and development within the a lot of people just come and facilitate and talk to you so all that when you what register is that's what they're going to ask what you, you want to that become. have you done facilitator course and yes guide you then anyway, show us the certificate and the so that's why we emphasize then they can register you against what you have up what is qualified facilitation plan Remember, you must have qualified the for plan something will like give an you engineer what or a must computer be spoken technician about what or, must uh, be discussed, uh, what an must environmental be whatever what you've done, your previous qualification, an assignment then they add on this to be a facilitator. You must have the done exit this course, outcome. Then they can register towards you. leading individuals to that direction that you right. want them to become. Just the same way. Right the person now, goes to and does nursing. So whatever I'm you going know, to speak, you are a nurse. Be but you cannot go to the hospital and claim to be a nurse. You must be the certificate. a competent facility. You must show us the proof of registration as a nurse. That's through the South African Nursing Council. Right? So this yes, can only be oh, done I'm through understanding I'm even registered with the South African Nursing Council. Read more then about the hospital will give you a principles because you are registered. They can trace the your registration so and if you must also the align it to the standardization of that You will be able to facilitate any sector. given program at any given level. The same you applies you to teachers. You cannot go to on, teach on without the South African Council for Educator Certificate. The NPF, so you must go and get the NPF yourself also emphasizes or it insists on the and says we give you that of education and training. You cannot Why? be a doctor because unless you are registered with the Health start. Professional Council. Right? You know who is the That's learner? The same process. Not the same like process you just apply to us and go to class and you don't know who's the learner in this industry. Now QCTO the does the all facilitators. That you, as a facilitator, must know who is the learner. It means you are part the of QCTO the QCTO is the quality council for trades and occupations. You are part of the admission policy. That policy is that the one that governs all into a class the six to the a, a school or a course. You. As a facilitator, and that's why we call you uh, a it, course it administrator. A course administrator, uh, it means is a facilitator who knows support and implementation the course inside and out. Quality assurance so you that are there is part of it that you are going to guide the those who qualify, qualify in to learning be on the and course development by using part the of the requirements that they all do facilitators must course. be registered. Those who do not qualify, all you have a bridging course to guide them towards what you want them to become. Not to dismiss them, okay. but to guide them. So you are part of so the this admission is the process. part of it. And by the way, if you've done this course also, if it you admit you the can right also facilitate the right this course, course, you are going to That's attract the, the right it. individuals who will stay in the course because and complete it becomes the qualification. Not it means the you can also facilitate the facilitator course. That means means we you become a because trainer. if you take any train person, those trainees without you, vetting you train them, trainer. They will exit. That's why you find normal schools. You find in a course they started with That's 100 people. Goes. Now they have 20. Okay. Where are the rest? 
Now, let us look at the NQF. The reason why I understand you're already facilitating and you know some bit of NQF, okay? Yeah, the NQF is a, you is must a national know. qualification framework. Thank you. You this must know what you are teaching that records the achievement to of the learners, entire system right? against standards that are right. set onto the, the NQF national also acts the record red list of the past unfair discrimination. We have levels now, running now, from level that. one way up until level two. Part 10. of the group that you're going right. to have. Right, your role as a facilitator and to know that are coming which from level historical are you facilitating from under. poor Why? areas because every qualification has got an individuals, level. they never got access to proper education. So, if you are even you are able to establish that still, every NK schools level in townships and areas they are, are meeting their less targets and their specific requirements, they are not having facilities, they don't have facilitate. all the resources it becomes that they need. easy then for you to, to mix these people into one class. They are coming from different environments. Without that knowledge of your NKF levels, on one it, it becomes course. very difficult How for individuals to exist why candidates or learners be able to the manage individuals. They won't be able to conduct this proper background. assessment. Facilitating them without discrimination. Right. You get what I'm saying? All of them are equal, must get equal opportunities towards learning and development. But if one student is good and the other one is bad and then you are unable to monitor and see how you can support, then you will not manage that class or that facilitation. You won't manage it. Yes. So these are some of the objectives. Also, now this is the overview of the development. NKF of each land I'm gonna quickly and the share with you the overview of the, the NQ. Okay. The more you facilitate individuals using the principles of NQF, it means you are I'm not only helping you but you are growing the, the nation. NQF. If okay. learners come out of your and class you and they are the so main, much competent, they have got the right information, you know they're going to contribute towards the growth okay. quickly. But that imagine you've trained people the and then you the find them on the street, they're the jobless system. now. But they've got a qualification and they the went through your hands and they are not doing nothing about it. By the way, uh, it means the facilitation was done properly. Whoever was doing it class was not passionate okay? at facilitating. For learning purposes. So a video will be made yeah. available at That's the how end it of works. this session. Okay. So you can also go back and review and understand you get what I'm saying? that information. Okay. So don't worry about uh what you might miss out but the video is going to be made available so the nqf system has got two main stakeholders the department of education and the department of labor okay now i don't know if you are able to see clearly what i'm going to be presenting the de the department of labor cannot operate right without the nqf system as it has been made it has to operate in existence with the nqf and other stakeholders what happens that for economic growth and development there must be skilled individuals that's why you are teaching people i don't know why you are teaching people but you are teaching people because you want them to practice to go and have jobs and start working isn't it so when you go and to teach individuals, you teach them based onto the economic sector. Wherever they're going to work, they're going to work in a specific sector. They cannot work in all sectors. We have close to about 21 economic sectors. And all those economic sectors is just one economic sector that one individual can work. It's only those that are multiple skilled individuals that have got uh, a, a, a high qualification or a magnitude of other different uh, a qualification that they have acquired over a period of time that can work from or cut across from one sector to another but most of the majority individuals they focus on one economic sector so the department of labor has to conduct what is called a skills gap analysis okay okay they have to conduct what's called a skill gap analysis through is a uh, different sectors are we together now the skills gap analysis will produce a report 
that report will indicate which areas in a specific sector need specific skills. Those skills must be developed in form of a program or a qualification that people can train on against and then be experienced then be hired or employed in to fill up the positions or the vacancies that are found into those sectors. So once the report has been developed, it will be sent to the Department of Education. All right? The Department of Education will have to send the report or information for development of the course through SACWA. That is South African Qualification Authority. You get what I'm saying? The South African Qualification Authority is the overseer of qualifications. All qualifications that are that are registered onto the NKFs must be registered through SACWA. They must be obtained, developed through SACWA. Under SACWA, we have what is called the NSB. Okay. The NSB stands for the National Standard Bodies. So these are not only one, but there are many. NSBs, National Standard Bodies. These develop SOPs, standard operating procedures. Like an example, a teacher. To practice as a teacher, there are specific standard protocols and standard operating procedures that a teacher must follow when they're in class, when they're out of class, how they conduct themselves, right? That's the standard. A doctor, they have their own SOPs that they must follow. A nurse must follow specific standards and protocols. A pilot must follow the same procedures. You get what I'm saying? Those are standard operating procedures. They are developed based on the specific industry. They're not just developed for the sake of development. An industry to progress and prosper, there are specific guidelines that are always developed for individuals to follow that the industry can produce better results. Okay? So once the SOPs have been developed, these SOPs are sent to what is called the SGB. SGB. SGB stands for Standard Generating Bodies. Okay? Standard Operating, Standard Generating Bodies. These Standard Generating Bodies are all the in a specific uh, small unit panel of subject matter experts that their job is to design and develop curriculums here all right their job is to design curriculum the curriculum that you get to teach individuals is developed by these sgbs okay so it's a panel of subject matter experts that understand the industry they know the field specific fields and then they develop curriculums that people must learn against and then they must be trained against that curriculum and then they must go back and work in that specific industry or specific fields that they have been trained under once that is done a program is developed that program is the one that is registered onto the nkf as a standard program so you find that every program that has been developed through the sgb has got specific program code it will be either a registration number if it's uni standard it will be a, having a uni standard id number a qualification id number they benchmark it to an nkf level they'll also have what is called credits okay Yeah, I mean, programs go up to NKF level 10, isn't it? You don't need to take up to, there's no like facilitator course which is NKF level 10. No, a facilitator course is coming from a qualification called 50334. I'll put it here for you. Okay, so you can go to SACWA and add the word SACWA and then you can search. You can search this qualification. Add SACWA and put this qualification. 50334. This qualification is called OD.
Okay? It's called OD, Occupationally Directed Education and Training Development Practices. This is the course. This, what you are doing now, the unit standard that you are busy now, is aligned to NKF Level 5 already. So already you are under NKF Level 5 on this course. All right? There is NKF Level 6, but it stops at Level 6. Facilitation at Level 6. There is no more facilitation at Level 6. For you to advance to level six, you need to do the entire OD level six and then go do a bachelor's program in education. Okay. Yes. Then when you do a bachelor's program in education, then you can do a master's program. Right? It's either you took you take you take any stream that you are feel you comfortable in, then you can go do a PhD after then. Okay. Yes, that's how it works. Okay, from NKF level 5 programs, they take close to about 2 years, right? Right? 2 years to 3 years. So, if you want to add on to do uh, a master's degree program, a master's degree is either 2 years is 1 year, okay? Then to do a postgraduate program, it's going to be either uh one year so just keep on adding one year one year up to phd level 10. yes you start with od occupationally directed education and training development practices this one all right so you can see that all these programs under nqf level they must be evaluated by the you see what called etqas these are the education and training quality assurers these are the CETA quality assuring agency right that and yes so this is where the etqas come into to evaluate okay then remember we say that it is uh helping right. to create an integrated framework for learning and achievement so we proceed quickly uh, to, uh, to recap part to what we have just yes, said uh, discussed the quality. NKF is basically is running from level 1 to level 10 to education okay. is qualified that's why you are going to be registered as a facilitator assessors are, quite, are registered moderators are registered it also accelerates the readiness of unfair discrimination in education and training development practices looking at opportunities for individuals contribute to personal growth and development this is the NQF. it's your role as a facilitator to master this all right for this we're gonna have to end our session from here then when we meet again uh tomorrow is no there's no class there's only class in the evening i don't know whether you'll be able to attend the evening class but it starts at 10 at night yes okay so the next class starts at 10 to uh tonight and then we can be able to wrap up tonight or tomorrow uh tomorrow 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 okay. tomorrow sunday night yes yes okay any question no i'm fully covered and very inspired thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day see you again tomorrow Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye.